We would like to bring in Larry and April Smith, owner of a beautiful Aquila, affectionately named the one eyed dog after their puppers, Abby. <laughs> and they are great adventurers. Today, we're specifically going to talk about their adventures on the Great Loop. Yes. Larry and April, welcome to the program. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. That's that's more more appropriate. We did talk to you last year, uh, kind of specifically about your your boat and mm -hmm. uh, what you've done to it and some of the adventures. We we dabbled a little bit, but today we're getting into the Great Loop and how you navigate and just tips people can can take away from from this about um, you know how to travel if they want to travel. So. So first of all, let's get started. You're not on your boat. Where mm -hmm. where are you located right now? We're at our daughter's home in Palm Harbor. We come home to here for the holidays and to do all the medical dental vet appointments and get out of the way. Yep. And we are doing any maintenance on the boat that needs to be done. Right. And we are ready to get back to the boat. <laughs> we are <laughs> So. I'm sure. And and for those of the uh, the people out there that don't know your boat, could you tell them a little bit, if maybe they haven't seen the first episode, tell them a little bit about your boat, your specific. We have a 2018 Aquila 44 power catamaran. Uh, we are, we were the very first liveaboards mm -hmm. in Aquila. So we took the boat and we have been on it now for two and a half years and we just love her. We have done over 15,000 miles in two and a half years on her. So we've done wow. quite a lot. Yeah, you to say, you know, a lot of people who don't really use their boat too often or they don't get a chance, they're busy or whatever. I mean, you guys are the complete opposite. It's like uh, anytime you get an opportunity, you're out there on the boat. And of course, you know, with that Aquila too, it's just so versatile. You can you can sleep overnight, you can sleep for what, months at a time. Uh, it can be your personal home. Two and a half years. It's <laughs> <laughs> great. Excellent. All right. Well, Let's get into your plans for uh, upcoming. So are you going to do the Great Loop again? What's what's your next adventure? Well, yes, we will do the Great Loop again at some point. We're not sure when. Um, this year, we were going to head down to the BVI. And then due to insurance requirements, we mm. felt we were too late to be able to take that trip. So as of the 29th of this month, we're going to head down to the Keys, go do the Dry Tortugas, and then head back up the East Coast, go to the St. John River by Jacksonville, head yep. up to the Outer Banks of North Carolina, the Albemarle Sound, maybe as high as Long Island Sound, we're really not sure, but we always tend to rush up the East Coast because we're doing the loop or we need to get right. to the chest. Mm -hmm. This time we're gonna take our time and just kind of explore all the little inland waterways that are along the East Coast that people never get to see. Oh yeah. Well, I, hey, I think uh, it's it's time for you guys to start your own YouTube channel or something like that too. And every yeah. day, you know, <laughs> along the way, just vlog it and, and put it out there. There's so many cool ones out there. I'm sure your guys' adventures would be. You get a lot of viewers, that's for sure. Wow, well, thank you. <laughs> um, have you ever, real quick, have you ever made it up to um, near Long Island, uh, Block Island? Have you ever been up to that area? No, but everybody tells us to go to Block Island, and that was going to be a plan last year when we were doing mm -hmm. the Downey Circle Loop, which we didn't get to do because of COVID. Yep. So another plan of ours too is when Canada reopens, we're going to do the Downey Circle Loop, which takes you up the Hudson, through the Erie, up the Rideau Canal, through the St. Lawrence Seaway, down Nova Scotia, and down to the New England States. So that was originally the plan, but mm -hmm. obviously as with everything else, COVID got in the way of that. So we'll make that another trip we'll make for another day besides the BVI ABI and the SVIs. That's right. And that's the number one thing about boating. Be adaptable. Yep. Yeah. Right. Have a plan A, B, C, D, right. E. <laughs> Come up with something right. else. Well, that's it. This last summer, we were supposed to go do Downey Circle, and we ended up going to the Inland Waterways instead and did the Tennessee and Cumberland Rivers. The boating there is spectacular. I'm and sure. I cannot recommend to people enough to go hit those waterways. It's inexpensive, you can't get lost, it's sail sailboats are everywhere. Amazing trip this summer, so. That's uh, great. You have, you have dockage as cheap as $20 a night. 15, yeah. <laughs> For that matter about how big your boat is, $15 a night. All right, wow. well, com compare that to some hotel pricing. That is uh, <laughs> darn good. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, I, I did want to just pop up while we're discussing uh, their adventures. Uh, there's a PowerPoint presentation that they put together for the Great Loop. And uh, as we kind of just go along and discuss some of these things, I'll just bring it up on screen. And uh, um, I think we can kind of just discuss it a little bit too. So, Great. 
Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah, let's dive into this. So I know that a lot of people I'll always ask you, okay, you have a catamaran. That's a, a pretty specific vessel. And is it difficult to travel the Great Loop? And of course, your answer is no. No. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. You know, of course there not. are decisions you have to make. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the biggest one is there's specific height requirements and all that mm -hmm. that you need to have. But the biggest decision is, are you going to do the Welland Canal or are you going to do the Trent Severn Waterway? If people are absolutely dying to do the Trent Severn Waterway, they might not want to do it on a wide beam boat. You have a maximum beam of 23 feet. Okay. So, well, the maximum width for the last canal is 23 feet. So your beam really needs to be like two and a, 22 and a half. Um, now, the 44... It is smaller it. than that. It technically can do it. Right. But we'd already done the Trent Severn before. So we said, let's go do the well and, mm -hmm. and try something different. Right. Yep. You know, so the other thing with the Trent is that there's not only is it that narrow, the last lock, it's also there's some very narrow channels. And okay. that was another thing too. And it's um, granite. And it's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Boats are passing you. You know, you've got boats coming on head on. And you really don't want to be in a very narrow channel with a very fat bottom boat. So right. it chose not to do it. Can it be done? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, next time we'll rent a houseboat and go do that. <laughs> well, it right. me, the amount of uh, knowledge and, and skill that you've gained probably throughout these years of, of navigating these waterways. I mean, that in itself is part of the adventure too, right? Is to gain a new skill. And I think, uh, you certainly, when you're you're dealing with those tight situations and working with other boaters, and I mean the amount of knowledge that you bring home on a daily basis uh, is, is pretty powerful. Yeah, we're kind of surprised, <laughs> <laughs> but to date we've done 222 locks. Wow! Know, so, so that's huge, and and we're you know very comfortable in them now. And and I the very first time we went through locks on the Erie Canal, I looked at Larry. I said, now I know why loopers drink. You know, <laughs> so, you know, everyone, you never know what's going to happen and you always have to be prepared. So that's right. part of the thing, you know, mm -hmm. but doing the loop on a catamaran is very easy to do. Their um, marinas are plenty for them. You are not going to always be in a slip and you will rarely be in a slip, yep. you know, but there's always a wall. You can always anchor out if you have mm -hmm. to. We have well, never there's had always a tea head. There's, there's always, always a fuel. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and we have spent the night on all of those. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, um, but generally, we get tea heads, yeah. and tea heads have the most beautiful view in the marina. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Tea heads. Well, why don't we go to the next slide, and I'll explain what those. Are. That's just where we got our platinum loop on the Aquila. Um, you know, obviously, when you're doing the Great Loop, you're going to see some magnificent sights, and we oh, didn't yeah. want to talk too much about that. Um, but there we are in front of the Statue of Liberty, the St. Louis Arch. And we also got to go, the last one is the Rock, Rock and Roll. Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. Wow. That's so cool. And that's, because we, that's because we did the well and, we, and that drops you down into Lake Erie, yep. which is where this is. Right. And it was really fun. They were, they were really cute. So that's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in the background. Across behind us was the Cleveland Browns Stadium, which we got yeah. in to a football game, which was real exciting. And, um, you know, it was pretty cool. We were, the, the dock guy there was so excited. He says people were coming over to the marina just to ask about the Aquila because we're the first one that's ever been in these waters. Oh, cool. So it was cool. special to be there. Sure. Yeah, yeah and that's a beautiful uh, city and just an industrial <laughs> location. Oh, the yeah. restaurants, the yeah. nightlife. Yeah, it was, just, it was a lot wonderful. of fun. But so. the, one of the things April was talking about is we got invited to the football game there by somebody that was just following us you on, know, right. on, on, I think, Facebook or something. Yeah, well, she wanted an Aquila. And she wanted to buy an Aquila. Yeah, they, they and still so you know, these friendships that come right. in from all different places, yep. and it is just so cool. Yeah, and she actually lived in Connecticut and happened to be visiting Cincinnati, <laughs> saw what I said, it's Cleveland. Saw that I posted the picture. Said, "Oh my God, are you here?" So she came to meet us in person, and then invited us to the game. And we got these um, really good fifty-yard line tickets. Right. Nice. <laughs> it's amazing. So, What's her name? I need to know her. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you go to the next slide, sure. That's what I'm talking about the route a little bit. Yeah. Um, and what you know, obviously, everybody has the same route. But when you're a catamaran, like we already mentioned, you're going to have to choose whether you can do the Trent Severn or you're going to do the Welland Canal. 
The Trent Severn is 44 locks long. The last lock is actually called lock number 45 because one is no longer there. Um, again, the maximum width is 23 feet lock. So you can do the entire Trent Severn, but if you're over 20 feet wide, you got to turn around and go all the way back. Yeah. Um, the Welland Canal was cool because it's a series of eight locks. It is a commercial mm -hmm. only canal and you have to have, you know, you get in line, you go, you go right through in one day. So it took us eight and a half hours. Well, that's the way it works now. It, no, it always worked work that way. We know people have been 36 hours waiting to get through. Uh, wow. But they changed the way it works now, so it goes a lot quicker. There's certain days for locking down, locking up. I've got a whole slide about that later. You know, um, once you get through, you can still do Canada if you want to do Canada. Um, mm -hmm. and do the the areas along the you know Canadian border. Well, we did Niagara when we were there going through the Welland. We went over and did uh, Niagara, Niagara Falls. On the lake. We visited Niagara on the yeah. lake. Beautiful, beautiful yeah, city. Yeah. And then the yeah. fall, my goodness. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. So we did the touristy things, did the boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, you know, but anyway, so you people say, oh, I'm going to lose all this stuff by missing the Trent Severn. You really aren't going to miss nope. anything by missing the Trent Severn. They're beautiful cottage towns, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of little boaters, a lot of docks. It's, you know, it just, we love it, but, you know, you don't have to feel like you're going to miss yeah. something by oh, taking a one. Abby. There Abby. she is. One eyed oh, dog yeah. in the flesh. Uh, one of the things the that, <laughs> yep. One of the things we get asked about a lot are our phone apps and what do we use? Sure. Mm -hmm. yep. you know, whether you're putting the great loop or whether you're putting anything else, you're going to use the same, you know, information. But the ones I really wanted to point out is there is an app called the GLCFS. Um, what that is is the Great Lakes Environmental Research Laboratory. Um, that app, if you show the next slide, no, nope, that's my phone. Um, the next slide. That's it. Yep. That's okay. my theory. This app, there's a point where you can animate the app, or the, the map that's there. Okay. It's going to show you the wave pattern of what's going on on the Great Lakes. Mm -hmm. on, this oh my gosh. on the Great Lakes. Um, this is a critical app to have, whether you're doing it in a catamaran mm -hmm. or a monohull. And whether you do the well in or the Trent Severn. Or the Trent Severn, because you're going to end up on the Great Lakes at some point. What that app does is it tells you what the fetch is going to be the wave pattern due to the wind. Mm -hmm. Right. We learned about this the hard way. We got out onto Lake Ontario. Beautiful and day. Beautiful. Windy, wind finder. Everybody said, oh, the wave is not to be more than one foot. Well, we're in three to five foot rollers that were less than one second apart. It actually caused the silly panels to fall down on the inside of our boat. Uh, wow. It was a miserable afternoon we had in a long time. Abby is throwing so up all That's our us. second loop and we're oh, experienced. We're right? experienced loopers, right. Yep. So <laughs> but we didn't know what happens on the lake is the wind causes the waves to build up and they call them rollers. And those uh -huh. rollers roll across. And you have to hug certain spots. So what this app does is it it goes to where you can see what's the wave pattern going to do from the morning to the afternoon. Wow. And that you can see, do I travel on the north side, south side, east side, west side? It is a brilliant app. It's critical to have if you're going to do the loop or travel the Great Lakes. Yeah. Well, that's, it, that shows, I mean, how nice it is for technology to, to really come in handy in certain situations where even a few years ago, you wouldn't have that luxury. So. Exactly. I mean, you you would have to call up acquaintances and say, what are you well, what's it doing out there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Talk to the fishermen on right. the thing. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to 70-foot waves. It's okay. Um, we didn't get to do Lake Superior on the loop with the Aquila because when, I put, when I put this app into animation, there were going to be 18-foot waves. Wow. And we've all heard the song, but we weren't willing to go see if we could join the Edmund Fitzgerald. Um, yeah, no thanks. So, well, that is the reason why right. we will be back up there again. Yep. So yeah. Can, right. Also, Lake Michigan, same thing. Oh, it's rough. Pay attention to Lake Michigan because they call it Lake Washing Machine. Yeah. And, and Lisa, cool. I, I think it's pretty cold, right? I think I've been in Lake Michigan a few times. Yeah. That is a cold lake to be in, even oh, in the summertime. It is. <laughs> but it can be beautiful. And, it's and gorgeous. Another big thing is don't travel on days that the weather's bad. If you're on the loop, 
you, you don't have a schedule. So we had the first time we were there, we did 27 days on Lake Michigan. And we didn't have any bad travel days because we only went 30 miles to the next little town and mm -hmm. hopped in and enjoyed it, you know. So, you know, people that have really bad experiences are the ones that say, oh, well, I've got to get to the next stage. Yep. Wait. I think so, yeah. It's like They're don't make too rushed. long of a journey during a day. You don't want your entire day to just be travel and you're totally tired and wore out. Yeah. And then they do the same thing again. Right. Mm -hmm. again. Yeah. Right. That's the way to do it. It's do short trips. Do short so trips. logistically, is that how you're planning and, and making your slip reservations? Is you're doing these tiny little chunks one at a time, or how far out do you plan? We well, it, it depends on the, the where we're going, of course. Right. Um, we try and stay mm -hmm. in a place at least two nights, and okay. when we try and travel about fifty miles a day, you know, and we travel at ten, so we go about five hours. So what that does is that we leave about eight in the morning, we get in around two o'clock ish or so. It gives us time to go look at the town, see what's there, maybe have dinner. Um, yeah. The next day we can relax, we can sightsee, we can do much needed boat chores. Um, mm -hmm. And then again, eat dinner out, shop, provision, do whatever we need to do, and then leave the next day. Um, sometimes it's more fun to stay a week, depending on where you're at, like Cleveland, we spend a week in Cleveland. Or, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we spent a week in New York and then there's those marinas that you really want to get into, like the uh, Green Turtle Bay, which is in Grand Rivers, Kentucky. That's one of those places we call that. That's the reward for getting mm -hmm. down the rivers is getting to go to Green Turtle Bay. Yeah, they have um, a spa. You can get yeah, massages. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful spa. <laughs> so, you know, so those are the kind of places we do make sure we call in advance and that's the only time schedules we'll have is knowing that because the boat is a different width, you know, mm -hmm. where are we going to go and when can they accommodate us? So that's the planning ahead. There are places that there you can't get into at all. It just isn't going to happen. Whether mm -hmm. you're a, a deeper draft boat, whether you're a longer boat, you know, there's even smaller boats. There's one marina that when we came down our first loop, they only had a three foot depth to get in. Mm -hmm. So if you yeah. more than three foot draft, you weren't going that marina no matter what. So that knocked out about 80, 90 percent of the boats that, that were, were doing on the loop. loop that year. Yeah. Levels. So you know, we try and plan, you know, we're gonna go to, to Chicago. We mm -hmm. want to stay at DeSabo Marina, which is right there walking distance in downtown. So that, you know, I'll call ahead and say, you know, when can we get there? When do you have a tea head available to us? And it has not been a problem at all. Yeah. That's great. Wow. Um, Knock on wood. Yeah. Knock it on wood for you. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I also uh, brought up here. Um, you know, you're mentioning the the locks and uh, and just getting in through some narrow waterways too. So I, I brought up. You know, what are some of your tips here uh, uh, for kind of getting through some of the locks? And I uh, see fenders, fenders, fenders. That's uh, <laughs> your tips. not enough fenders. Um, we we have a lot of fenders on the boat. What we recommend <laughs> a, a keyless specific, of course, for us. But we there we go. Um, this picture I did not have how we do the front fenders now, um, but you can see how the fenders are pushing up against the wall of those locks. Mm -hmm. um, those are 31 inch round fender balls. We put that on the front cleat of the Aquila and mm -hmm. we put one on the aft cleat of the Aquila. Nice. Um, that has been proven to be the best. I do put us a long, an 18 inch long fender at the very point of the tip where the boat comes out just as we're coming in in case that those bow in more than we want to, that protects the bow. But these 21 inch balls have kept our boat off the wall with no additional fenders. Wow. Um, one of the things you want to be careful mm -hmm. is tying those fenders high on your railings. Don't do it. Don't do it. Um, on the Welland Canal, the force of water was so strong, and we're going up that so it you're going up, and it's pushing your boat into, into the, wall, the wall, and, and we, then you're going up the wall, sliding. So uh, that fender can pull down. Right. Sure. I could just and rip, almost, rip almost off. Off. Well, it started to bend our railing, and we said, "Oh, oh yeah. and we've made a real quick correction." <laughs> right. Oh my gosh! Our yep. only uses the cleats. I only use the cleats. I always keep the center cleat naked. I call it because that is where I'm going to control the boat from. I have a special dock line I use. I had a 25, a 20 footer. I just changed it to a 25 footer. It's a different color, and Larry's not allowed to touch it ever <laughs> for anything 
ever at any time because he's known to take it and go tie the bike down or something with it. <laughs> I, I did once and I got yelled at. Oh, big time. <laughs> that was my line I used for when we were in the inland rivers with the bollards. Mm -hmm. And it gives me, a, I know that is just my line for that. I keep it right by there. But I attach that line to the center cleat and I can control the boat with that with no problem. I You always hold the fender, the, the line. You never, ever lock them down and you never Never walk away from a line. The one time I stepped back holding the line, I had the line roll underneath and lock itself mm -hmm. down. We we're on our hatters, which was 52 feet long, 76,000 pounds, and it was literally getting pulled out of the water. And I had to cut the line. Why yeah. April? She did. I was sounding the I was sounding the five blast inside yeah. because the we're, boat started to go like this. Yeah. So so you always have a knife with you. You always make sure that you are monitoring those lines. Whoever is your line tender. That is their one and only job. Whoever else is on the boat can help make sure fenders yeah. are doing what they no do. No cameras, no pictures, no telephones. Yeah. Um, I have to say I'm a little bad with that, but I've got <laughs> third point two locks. I'm kind of in control. Um, so those are our big things, you know, is is those big round fender balls are yep. worth their weight in gold. They're a lot cheaper than gel coat repair. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, right. yeah. The previous picture that showed the boats in the canal. Right here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, that gives you an idea of, uh, that's like an entrance coming into. Um, oh, that, that, was, uh, that was the Erie Canal. And we had friends that came and they were taking pictures of us entering the Erie. So that's the Erie going through there. But it's so beautiful. If you look off to the side there, off to the right, mm -hmm. um, where the boats left the port side, um, you'll see they have, it, everybody has campgrounds in all these places. Oh, wow. So you can oh, just yeah. do that right against the locks. Yeah. Friends, severance, they barbecue. Yeah. And I mean, it's just, yeah. it's, it's fun. It's fun for us to watch them and them to watch us. Right. Um, as far as locking too, you always have to have a, a, a light vest on. It's a yep. requirement. I think I saw locks. that here too. There, right yeah. there. They do. Up in and up in Canada, you have to turn your boat engines off when you're in the lock. In the U.S., you don't. Right. Right. Um, this is Larry. In his favorite locking mode is he uses his docking master, which is like a yacht controller docking uh -huh. master. Oh yeah. You know, um, amazing, wonderful toy. They talk about the best marriage saver is literally the <laughs> best we ever bought for the boat. Um, we used to use headphones exclusively. Um, they're also great, highly recommended, better than yelling and hand signals and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, do not use a Bluetooth. We've had people that said, oh, we're just going to use the Bluetooth mm -hmm. connection on our cell phone. You don't get cell phone reception. Don't plan for that. So yeah. that's something that I always kind of go, oh my God, when someone says, I'm going to use, use my cell phone. Yeah. No, you get something that's dedicated for, for this. Purpose. You okay. know, it, it's critical. Um, when dealing with the locks, we, I always call the day before mm -hmm. and I say, you know, we're going to be coming through. Is there anything we need to know? Um, lock masters are, and, and bridge tenders, they're kind of, you know, that's their job and, and mm -hmm. they're really for the commercial traffic, not for power craft, which we are, we're pleasure craft. Pleasure, yeah. We're not PC, you know, they call them PCs. Um, you know, I always kind of leave it in their hands. We're going to be coming through. Is there anything you need us to know? You know, right. when we travel through, I always put it back to them and they've always worked with us very nicely. I even had one lock master texting me. I couldn't believe it. But, <laughs> um, you know, but we get through, we don't, you hear about people getting stuck at locks for hours and hours and hours and days. Mm -hmm. um, we've not had that happen to us. And I think a lot of it is the way you handle it. They do tend to work better with women than men. So we have it's that. true. It's, it's true. true. So I, I hate to say that, but I think they don't talk to a lot of women, so they tend to work <laughs> with women in there. And uh, not a lot of work. for whatever reason. The Army Corps of Engineers and all that stuff—they don't have a lot of women. They do have women lockmasters, but they do. But it's 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 few. It's few sure. and far between. So, anyways, so that's our recommendation for that. Um, okay. You know, and oh, and always be prepared to raft up. There's a chance okay. to raft it up with other boats. I um, did see one of the images. I think it's Kelly slide number 25. Yeah, there's one I put in there that's right that there. was like super yeah, that wow. one. That is my favorite picture of our entire boating experience. That is the Wilson Lock in Alabama, right outside Florence, Alabama. That was taken at dusk by the Lockmaster. There are 23 boats in that lock and one homemade canoe. <laughs> of the wow. boats 
18 of them single filed out and went into the Florence Marina. And within an hour, we had all 18 boats tied up and we were in the bar. Right. But so, you, can, you can see most of the boats are double rafted. There's two sets there that are triple rafted. And we uh -huh. are the second set with the triple rafted boats in our on our Hatteras. But that just okay. gives you an idea of one, how big these locks are. Yeah. yeah. And and two, what it could look like. Um, we always laugh when someone says, "Oh, I've been through the locks on Lake Okeechobee." I said, "Oh, honey, you have not been through." The locks. <laughs> and that also kind of illustrates why you have to be a little coordinated. Yes. In your effort on coming into a lock by right. talking with the other boat captains and, and mm -hmm. like, okay, this is how we're going to go into a lock. Right. right. The bigger boats are going to go in and tie to the wall. The smaller boat will, you know, next smaller boat will go there. Like the front picture with the triple boats. It's kind of like you got a bigger boat and then rafted is a yep. little bit smaller. Right. And then on the very end of them is an even smaller boat because everybody is now rafted against that one boat that's sitting on the wall, providing all the support for them. Right. Yeah. It's just a feat of engineering too, of just yeah. seeing all this and, and what, what goes into making this happen. It's just, uh, oh, yeah. and, the, and those locks, they're all controlled by gravity. Yeah. 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 It's not pumps that's pumping water. It's gravity. You know, opening Pushing gates and water out, right. or closing gates and letting water in. Right. There's a, and I think the next picture is us going through the well and on the Aquila. Let's see. But, or there is a picture. There's three of them. What number is it? I don't know. Let's is see. it the one with the the yellow? It looks like a. Where is it? I think Where it was right This one. Nope. No. Next one. Okay. That one I do want to explain though, because that's the sure. funny one. Okay, we'll do that. So. <laughs> With the locks, in the lock systems, there's going to be very different. Uh, yeah, there's me controlling the boat um, in the rain. It was a red cell came through, and it was pretty fun. Oh, perfect. Yeah, it was great. Um, <laughs> but what's going to happen, the Erie Canal, the Welland, the Trent Severin, the Inland Waterways, they all have different methods of tying up. Okay. On the Erie Canal, they have lines that hang down from the walls. They're long. They're slimy. They're gross and dirty. You grab a line and you S loop that line around your cleat, preferably the center cleat. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, if your boat's long enough, you can grab two lines with one on the bow and one on the stern. I recommend just controlling from the center cleat. We have found that to be the most success. Um, that's where you need to have gloves mm -hmm. because you're getting the slimy, groupy, icky line. Yeah. Uh, that's where mm -hmm. I've had to cut. Not one, but I had to cut two lines on the Erie. So, so it's really critical to watch those. If you're yeah. going down, you're taking the line up. If you're going, I'm sorry, if you're going up, you have to pull the line up. If you're going down, you're it's letting the line, line loose. So you have to be really cautious of what's going on with that line the whole mm -hmm. time. Um, on the Trent Seven Waterway, they have cable systems. They have little cables that run down the length of the line, the, the lock wall. Just you permanently loop, in place. Right. You loop your line through that, and you're watching that line going up and down the cables. Okay. We had a cable rip off on us once. Oh. So, so it's really important, again, monitor, monitor. These are the inland waterway locks. Those are floating bollards, our favorite kind of lock. Um, you take that center line, that dedicated line I was talking about, mm -hmm. You tie the loop end onto your cleat, mm -hmm. you hold the bitter end, and you become, you channel your inner cowboy or cowgirl, <laughs> toss that line around that bollard, pull it back to the boat, and do your S line. Your S and then you back. both just float, float up, up and as down. The water increases They're the awesome. water goes down. Right. So okay. you, and all you have to do is make sure all your fenders are in place, and you're just going to float along. You That's know, great. Um, but it's really, really critical, you know, can't say enough how critical it is to monitor 22. that line. Yeah. Go to 22. 22. Let's see here. This one right here. Yeah. There's yeah. A yeah. So that's us in the Welling Canal. So is there any way to zoom in on the top right? I, I think I can. Let's see here. There you go. I wonder uh, if I can, I don't know if I can grab it, but. The boat that's in front of us traveled with us the entire day. They had just gotten that boat and they were bringing it around to Michigan. I just got an email from her the other day. That boat was lost in the fire that just came down the marina in Michigan. So that oh, was wow. the boat that they were getting ready to leave on this year and it, they just lost it. I had no idea it was the same boat until she emailed me. Yeah. Wow. Uh, that's tragic. On, the, on that top right photo, it's a little bit hard to see, but you'll see two people that are out on the bow. Yep. And they're they're both holding on to a line, 
and the line extends up to the top of the lock. Yes. You can slide to the right. There, there you go. There you go. Okay. And you can so see, see that, that line, line kind of go. That's how you were holding the boat close to the wall is getting wow. the leverage right. you could to pull it back into the right. Wall. So because on the well and wow. these locks are massive. They yeah. Have, you know, Clearly. They're massive. So on the when you take the boat going from Port De Lucy down to Port Colburn, you are doing what they call the up loop. Mm -hmm. or transit. You have to have three adults on board at all time. Um, you can, if you're going the other way down, locking down, they call it, you only have to have two. But when you're doing the up, you have to have three. They throw those massive lines down to you. You hold those massive lines on the outside of your boat, pulling you into the wall. And that's how you travel up for the eight and a half hours. And then you exit one lock, you go right into the next lock. And you're going down and if a laker co is coming through a commercial boat mm -hmm. you walk away you can't even enter the system of the eight lock you are waiting until all commercial traffic is through and wow. they take forever <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure but yeah it's for you ever watch paint dry this yeah, is it's slower. Just, it's slower. <laughs> yeah. well they're heavy so you know it takes yeah. a little while they and you, if you don't have three people you can hire somebody to go with you um, we happened to contact friends and we asked them, you know, what they wanted us to pay them for doing it. And they said, we like beer. So <laughs> pay them with beer. They are Canadians. They like beer. At the end of the day, all three cases were, were gone. gone. <laughs> you know, but, uh, but anyway, so, you know, and right now with COVID, you can still get through. What you have to do is you have to hire a professional captain to take your boat through. The owner of the boat cannot be on the vessel, okay. and we take it through and bring it around. Then you can go meet your boat. But um, so even with COVID, you can still get your boat through the Welland. Wow. Well, I'm telling you, I think uh, a lot of uh, potential adventurers out there would love to hear your your daily. It sounds like you're on Facebook. Um, We'd love to see some more uh, like videos of all this stuff you out on the uh, in, in these different waterways and explaining firsthand how this kind of thing works. I think that there'd be so many people out there that would. Lisa, you'd be interested to hear all about that. Like, yeah, uh, you're a producer. Yeah. You yeah. Hey, maybe Lisa. Maybe we could just go with you about that. <laughs> okay. I think we have a schedule adding up here. We're going to the Bahamas for a shoot out there at Green Turtle, and then we're going to be uh, in the locks talking there about. That would be great. <laughs> Well, yes. After, oh after God, all your God. adventures you've had so far and the ones leading, uh, uh, coming up in the future, what, what piece of advice, what's the main piece of advice you could give to people that would consider doing either the great loop or, you know, just doing some adventures out on their, on their boat. Like well, you guys do. Nice commercial, just do it. You know, um, yeah. yeah, that's a good, that's good advice. Life is too short. You know, and and we are blessed with a wonderful country where we can go do some amazing things. And even with, you know, COVID and with all the stuff that's going on, unless you get out there and go explore and go see stuff and go do stuff, you know, what's the point? You know, mm -hmm. yes, we have to work. We have to make money. You have to have jobs. You have, you know, you mm -hmm. have to do all that stuff. But in between that time there's a whole you know, country out there to destroy right. to to explore yeah. right yeah. and people are amazing i mean people are truly amazing boaters specifically are really the family that you get um we're very active with america's great Loop cruisers association the aglca um we fly their burgies when we get into a pull into a marina mm -hmm. we have other loopers come run you know mm -hmm. and that's always so nice because you have family and friends in the strangest places that you never expected to have them. Yeah. You know? And that's truly incredible. You know, the, the networking that goes on with that. Um, you know, it's, it's just wonderful to be able to go do stuff and, and sure. for a period of time, you can go do an awful lot. Mm -hmm. oh, that's, well that's excellent. So if people want to follow your adventures, what's the best, where should they go? Well, we're real active on Facebook. We have a Facebook page called The One Eye Dog, and it is O N E E Y E D O G. Um, if somebody has a specific question, you're always welcome to email us at one eye dog crew at gmail.com. I'm happy to talk to Aquila owners, future Aquila owners, catamaran owners, people that just want to loop, whatever. You know, yeah. it gives us something to do. <laughs> you 
Yeah, <laughs> it is. We're, we're, we're retired. We're retired. Right? Actually, so, I'm retired as of December 31st officially. So uh, congratulations. No, we truly are happy to talk to people and, and give the best of our advice that we can. You know, advice is worth what you pay for it, you know, but we've been there and done it. You know, like I said, we, we are, we've been voting now full time for four and a half years. And the four and a half years, we've done almost 20,000 miles. Yeah. Um, so we had a Volvo tech come out and check our engines to make sure everything was good. And he said, we've got twice the hours on our engines than any other Kilo he's ever been on. So, um, but that's because we use our boat. Yeah. You know, it doesn't just sit in the arena and collect barnacles. Well, and um, I, I think a lot of the problems that do come out of boats is not using them. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, so I think that that's, uh, the, the techs probably like to see a, a worn in engine, something that's, uh, that's been used as opposed yeah. to sitting and letting gravity do its thing. Exactly. Yeah. And when you, when you think about it, it's like, you know, our boat has, has the Volvo engines on it, but you know, those were originally truck engines, right? Mm -hmm. What do they do? They go across the country. Every day. I mean, back, yeah. I mean, yes. most of the hundreds of thousands of, of well, miles and hours on them. I mean, and those yeah. are, they're beasts. Right. They just keep running. Yep. They just want to keep going. Yep. Just like you guys. <laughs> <laughs> With catamarans, you know, people say, oh, you know, what's the, what's the big difference between catamaran and monohull? Um, our storage is incredible. Yes. The amount of, of comfort we have, you know, is is also incredible. So, you know, it's, it's easy to overweigh a catamaran by putting too much stuff on. I just took off about 100 pounds of yoga pants. Um, <laughs> you know, we have all the stuff we don't use. So it's amazing the stuff that we've had on the boat for two and a half years that we That's didn't true. use. That's I mean, true. And there, there, there are different beam sizes, widths on, on right. catamarans. Right. Our, you know, 21 and a half. Our friends are on a catamaran. That's only nineteen. Right, feet and wide. the endeavors are great with you know, boats. The I mean, uh, some of the some of the typical boats are you know between fourteen and sixteen, and that's mm -hmm. kind of a general width. So it's like, well, if you're only adding two or three extra feet, you're not adding a lot. So right. being on a catamaran is not that much different. But having sure. those two holes makes a tremendous amount of difference in the water as mm -hmm. opposed to a single hole. That of course. Right. right. Um, the other thing too, we've only had one marina ever want to charge us extra for dockage because of that. Um, it was in, in Fort Worth, Florida, and they said that they, we, since we were a catamaran, they were charged one and a half times. But the twenty-three foot sport fisher that was docked right behind us on the same wall only paid a single price. Um, exactly. So, so we don't go back to that marina ever. <laughs> <laughs> and smile yeah. but, so we've really never had a problem with that either if we were taking up two slips and obviously i would right yeah i'm taking up two slips but that has only happened one time in two and a half years you know? that's good so, to know and i think yeah. uh that's good for people that are looking at the aquilas to know because i think that's probably a question that comes up every once in a while well, is you, know, white sure, you know the other thing with the aquilas is you know we, we did it on a 44 because we Kind of downsized from our other boat, but it's like if you were doing the the thirty foot range, a mm -hmm. kilo, six. right? The thirty six. That's still in a that's perfect. A, that's a perfect perfect loop boat, and that one you could do the western area on too. So mm -hmm. that yeah, the loop boat. Um, give me a now, lot. now you fit in every slip. Right. You fit under every bridge. Right. And yeah. it's it's the same size inside as right. most of the trawl. Actually, it's probably bigger in size than some of the trawlers. We're getting a lot of questions from people who are looking at the new 54. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's still. We are too. Well, we are too. Uh, but that still <laughs> needs to be seen on whether or not that one can do the loop. It's, sure. it's right now, the, it can't because of the Chicago Bridge, um, which is 97, and the hard top is at 199. Wow. Although so it's close. something that's really on your bucket list and you can't live without it. They might be able to make some modifications. So, you and the boat gets lower in the water in fresh water than it does in salt, salt water. water. Right. So, until we still. get one in the water and we can really measure that hard yep. top and everything, you know, it's it's not sure yet. But, you know, that to me, that's a big issue is I've got to be able to get through the Erie. I don't necessarily need to go to the loop again, but I want to be able to get a boat through the Erie Canal. And that's at 20 feet, there's the maximum height you can do. Yeah. So, well, I'm sure those uh, engineers over at Aquila could figure something out to lower it a few inches if, uh, oh, if yeah. needed. 
<laughs> well, I mean, awesome. we could go on forever talking to you guys yeah. about your adventures. So, so we'll let you get back to your day. I do think we we probably need to catch up with you later in the year to see where you are and maybe For talk sure. more specifically about some of the areas that you've been to this year, including the Keys and up along the East Coast. Um, you're a joy to talk to, a, a plethora of knowledge. Yes. Uh, again, if anybody's looking for more information, one eye dog crew at gmail.com is our direct email address. And then you can follow them on Facebook, which I do. I love seeing photos. Uh, one eye dog on Facebook. Uh, Larry and April and Abby. I see Abby was with us. She's down there. Time, yep. huh? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So obviously that's where we got the boat name from for people who don't follow us. <laughs> so, yeah. There she is. Our dog. She is so, one dog. The yeah. adventurer herself. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for being on today. We we greatly appreciate it. Oh, you're so welcome, and thank you for having us. We we love being able to share with everybody, and and you know we love our boat. <laughs> yes. Great. Well, I'll catch up with you in Lake Michigan. Uh, I go to visit <laughs> often. Okay. Let's coordinate. When when there's a little bit less uh, ice on the shorelines, I think. Yes, uh, then we'll be yeah. good to go. <laughs> For sure. They sounded like a land lover. <laughs> well, thank you very much. We we greatly appreciate it, and uh, we'll catch up soon. So uh, uh, enjoy your time uh, down here in Florida, and then around the uh, the bend there down in Key West. Yeah. So have yeah. fun. Yeah.